Everyone at work keeps talking about the new season of My Hero Academia. I should probably just watch it. I've never really watched an anime show before, but so many people here have told me to. I wonder why we've never made a video, though. Hmm. I knew I couldn't just jump into My Hero Academia, let alone the entire anime genre by myself, so I called in reinforcements. I really love anime. Got into it through my dad when I was really young. He took me to an anime convention in Baltimore called Otakon. I got into it through Sailor Moon primarily. I mostly watch like slice of life anime, Fruits Basket, Peach Girl. I actually liked the manga much better than the anime. Really like Cowboy Bebop as well, which isn't slice of life, more of like a noir. So I first got into anime watching Dragon Ball Z back when I was in high school. And then in college, my roommate introduced me to Rurouni Kenshin. And there are some unbelievable fight sequences in that show. From there, I was kind of hooked. Full Metal Alchemist, and love to this day. Elfin Lead, I love Hunter x Hunter. I love Ergo Proxy is an amazing one. Recently, I love Shield Hero. That's more of a guilty pleasure. So I've never actually watched anime before, but I do love Miyazaki films. I had Kiki's Delivery Service on VHS when I was little, watched it every single night, spirited away, top fave. So I think I sort of know about anime, but I've never watched a show before. I don't know anything about the genres, but I think My Hero Academia is a good place for me to start. I'm actually going to be a hero. Or I'll just die. My Hero Academia takes place in a world where 80% of the population has what are called quirks. The quirks are really just superpowers. So think like X-Men in the Marvel world, Professor Xavier's School for the Gifted is the equivalent of the Academy in My Hero Academia. I know she likes Marvel movies, I know she likes X-Men, and this is kind of like the anime aspect of those shows in that genre. I was born without superpowers, quirkless. Just an ordinary kid. I wanted to be like him so badly, but I wasn't. The main character is Zuku Midoriya. He was born without one. He gets one later on in the show. He starts off completely powerless, and then by the end of season three, he's kicking major ass, and it's fun watching a character go from zero to hero. Young man, you too can become a hero. First, I thought Izuku was really annoying, but by the end, as he grows into his power and he starts making friends and you see more of his backstory, I understand why he's the lead character. Yes, Deku is annoying in the first season of My Hero Academia. In fact, most main characters are kind of annoying in shows. As he comes into his powers and he comes to be the hero that we all know that he can be, he becomes more of a badass and he becomes more of a leader and that's the kind of character that we want to see. We want to see some, some growth. And if he starts off as a little he can become that cool character that we know and we want to see. Everyone's always describing Izuku as the kid with the curly hair. <laughs> He doesn't have curly hair. I have curly hair. <laughs> so by like anime and Japanese standards, Izuku does have curly hair. Um, I feel like by our standards, by American standards, it's basically just wavy hair. Like I have curly hair, Morgan has curly hair. Izuku doesn't really have curly hair. It's, it's kind of like wispy and wild. And it's also hard to deal with curls. You don't have curls, kid. So when I first started watching My Hero Academia, I tried watching the subtitled version, which was fine. But I have to admit, I liked the dub. <gasps> I know, I know, everyone in the comments is gonna be really upset, but I think the American voice actors do a really good job. And as a first time anime watcher, I think I would wanna focus on the animation and not have to like read the subtitles at the bottom. I watch my anime with subtitles, partly because I like the sound of the Japanese voice actors. It brings me into the world a little bit more. I very much set up binge sessions where I'm gonna be watching 
eight to 10, 12, 20 episodes at a time, and I'm gonna be completely dialed in. So there's something about the subtitles and reading the words on the screen that forces me to focus. It creates this environment where I really feel like I'm in the world in a way that I'm not with American television. And I do say this from the bottom of my heart, Morgan, you gotta cut the with the dubs. It's embarrassing. One of the things that I do really like about the show, and I can definitely see why people like it so much, is the amount of detail and I think planning and cause and effect that goes into the world building. One of the characters I really like is Recovery Girl, the school nurse. Fittingly, she has a healing quirk. But what My Hair Academia does that's really cool is for every quirk, there are also limitations. My quirk stimulates your ability to heal, but healing takes energy. It's not my fault, that's just how the body works. So she can heal you really fast, but then you're really tired after because naturally it takes energy for our bodies to heal. That makes sense because that is a natural side effect of her quirk. Like I wonder if multiple people can have the same or similar quirks or is every single one very specific and unique to each person. I actually don't know if people could have the same powers in My Hero Academia. I do know that there is a situation in season two where two characters have almost the identical power. Their face off together is really kind of like a battle of wits in a way that ends in an arm wrestle to settle it. I really do like Aizawa, their homeroom teacher. His quirk is awesome, but he's also just a weird dude. He's very sleepy a lot and always seems to have a sleeping bag with him. I can relate, I'm always sleepy. But it's funny how he kind of zips himself up into a cocoon. I'm not sure why he's always so sleepy. His quirk relies on being stealthy and sneaky. He like works at night a lot. And then during the day, he's dealing with all these high school kids that have like f***ing superpowers. So if you were him, you'd be tired a lot too. I would personally love to always have a sleeping bag around, take a nap at work, take a nap on the subway, be able to just shut out everyone around me. I think most people would appreciate that. If I could have one quirk within the show of My Hero Academia, I would take all for one because I'm a selfish <laughs> This is a power that we see later on in the show where our main villain is basically able to do the opposite of All Might's quirk, which is steal powers from other people. For a more practical power, I've been thinking about this a little bit. I would like to have two griddles on my hands so that I could make the perfect waffle or grilled cheese whenever I wanted to. I would want some form of telepathy, a powerful one where I could move stuff with my mind if I wanted to like clean, but I didn't feel like getting up to have to do that. That's telekinesis, not telekinesis. Darn it, yeah. telekinesis. Thank you, yeah. you got me. This might be a hot take, but I think my favorite character is the principal of the school. That's me, the one who could be a mouse or a dog or a bear, though the only important thing is, I'm the principal! You don't know what his quirk is though, so I'm kind of like halfway expecting in season two he becomes like a bear bear or something, but for now he's been real cute. My favorite hero is Todoroki, um, and I just really love his power set, and I love his backstory and the interplay between the fire and ice that he has not only externally as his powers, but also internally in his heart. So my favorite student hero is Bakugo, and I just, I love him because of his tenacity. I just like his personality. He's such a great fighter. You can tell that he's going to be the number one hero. You know, Bakugo has nicknames for all of the characters. Hey, dumb hair. My name is Kirishima! Right, pink cheeks? Pink cheeks? The names of the characters just don't stick in my head. So I've kind of like a, created nicknames for a lot of the characters in my head so I can wrap my head around it. Maybe I'm Bakugo. Koda, who can uh, summon animals. He's got like animal kinship. That's straight up Mr. Potato Head. Sato, he's got the sugar rush power. Sugar lips is uh, an obvious one for him. Mineta, um, this is definitely purple drink pervert. He's just a straight up perv. Momo, of course, is Easy Bake Oven because um, she's able to create anything that she wants really out of her own energy. Like she can create like dishware, flatware, really anything that you'd want in the kitchen. But yeah, Easy Bake Oven is the vibe that I've got for her. My favorite episode, or I guess favorite arc, are the last three episodes of season one because you really get to see all the kids use their quirks and you get an explanation of how they work, their limitations, and then how the kids work together. 
My favorite episode of My Hero Academia is season two, episode 16, Hero Killer Stain versus the UA students. Really cool fight scene between Stain and three of the students at UA is just a badass sequence that caps off a really cool arc in the show. Season three, episode 23, and it's called Deku versus Kachan part two. And I just like it because the fight scene is absolutely beautiful. I also really like it because Bakugo is my favorite character, and this gives him a little bit more depth beyond just the privileged bully who like beats up on the corkless kid. So I binged all of season one of My Hero Academia as suggested by my coworkers, and overall, I really loved it. Very quick, easy episodes to watch. Love the plot, love the characters. I'm gonna binge season two this weekend. Morgan, so glad you liked My Hero Academia. It's definitely a cool one. I think for your next anime assignment, I'm gonna recommend your name. You mentioned that you love Miyazaki, and this is very much of that ilk. You should watch Cowboy Bebop, just because I think everybody should watch it. I really like Full Metal Alchemist, and then Yu Yu Hakusho. One of my favorite recommendations is always Elf and Lead. It's this combination of slice of life and horror, within one show, you get exposed to a lot of the anime world and then can make some really cool decisions about where you want to go next on your anime journey.